went to a new barber today. He wasn't new, he was like a hundred. But he fixed my hair like a 50s greaser thing with this hard part, so I guess I'll tell my kids that it's on fleek. Pro tip, if your kids have something annoying that they say, start using that. And they'll quit immediately. Picked up this guy yesterday, so it is a locking differential. You can see the springs in these plates, which basically basically keep pressure on those spider gears in here. I took this apart because when I went to go buy this, I wanted to have this with me. Just didn't want to spend money on something that ended up not fitting because that's very disappointing. It's a huge waste of time and money. But maybe I can put this back together for you guys to kind of show you how exactly does a positive track rear end on a Plymouth work? We'll grab these two. So your axles slide into these and you'll see that's 28 splines. And if you're doing something heavier duty, there'll be 31 splines here. But basically this gear on each side is what drives your car. I mean, that's what makes, uh, sends power out to each tire. So that's where the axles lock into. So they go into each side of this diff, like so. There we go. And then these two basically translate power out to those gears. So the best way to put those in is to kind of stick them in here and just rotate them like that. And we'll drop this pin. If we get them lined up just right, this pin will drop down into them. Oh, we may be off a tooth. Yeah, there we go. And then there's a keeper bolt that goes through here that holds this pin in place. And so basically, from the drive shaft, Power is transferred to the ring gear, which is bolted onto this, which rotates this entire assembly. Now these spin sort of, whoops, these spin sort of independently of the housing, but if you create pressure holding these out, what that wants to do is make sure that both of these spider gears turn at the same time and stay engaged. So like a factory traction lock will have this S-shaped piece of sheet metal, which is like a spring, which keeps pressure against these two spider gears that your axles are slid into. Essentially, we've got the same thing going on in this locking differential where those springs are putting pressure on that plate, on those plates, which keeps pressure on those spider gears. Again, there's tons of videos of people going over, putting together, and setting up a rear end. So we're not going to spend a ton of time on all the details of it. I just didn't want to miss a step in the process of building this truck because, I don't know, people seem to be interested. So, welcome to the video. So since we're getting all new, well, pinion and ring and bearings and everything, it seems silly, but we had to disassemble that just for this shim to try to meet or match what the factory must have determined was the right depth. So we have this guy now, so we can put it on the new one and press a bearing on and assume that we're at the right depth. So far, it appears that we're able to use this seal for the pinion 
and I've lifted this bearing in this uh, one spacer or race or washer or whatever shim and it looks like this is going to be the same bearing as well so so far we're going to use one bearing and race from this kit this is the only seal that fits I'm assuming we can use these ring bolts I have tested this nut it is the same so not going to use these seals not going to use these bearings not going to use this bearing I hope I'll I hope these are going to be usable because this is a pretty expensive kit to just nitpick two or three things out of I was kind of hoping it would keep everything being in one place anyway Good. Don't be a knucklehead and like stick an old bearing in here with a washer and something to try to drive that race in. Because all that's trying to do is expand the taper, which will create more pressure on the outside, which makes it not want to see. Alright, so needed to borrow a press, so we came to my friend Doug's house. Doug, Doug, Doug. You know, there's a lot of tools that you don't necessarily need to own. You just need your friends to own them. The other ones you can rent from the park store. But a press is not something that you use enough unless you're making a living doing something. Or unless you just got the space and the money that you can have sitting around. So, we've got our stuff stacked up. Um, bearings that we're not going to use out of that kit. And then the most important one is making sure that I, I strip the cage off of this bearing to where this one can, I know I'm not putting pressure on the, on the cage. So we're only pressing down on the center of that bearing. I do realize that I pressed this race in and these bearings in before I wash this thing, but you know what? They'll clean super easy, so whatever. Also, I went and got a transmission yesterday, and it may or may not have dumped a quart or two of oil on the rear mat in the back of the SUV, so that needs to get cleaned too.
This marking compound couldn't be much worse, but I do like the pattern that I'm getting. It's centered. It goes almost to full depth. Uh, some of these you can tell easier that it's out here on the heel and has a good pattern beginning in the toe. And then you can see on this side, again, the pattern centered. Um, it goes pretty deep in. Um, it reaches this far out to the heel and it's this deep into the toe. So again, this marking compound I don't think is giving us an accurate reflection of what our tooth pattern really is. But when it does show up, I like what I see. So that's it. That thing is handled, if you will. Just need to button this up, which you guys may have seen me earlier in the video, kind of polishing on this with the wire wheel, uh, which made it look really cool. Since it's aluminum, it somewhat polished it. It's gonna look super sick in there. But anyway, that's it, and that's all on that differential. Thanks for watching, y'all. No cap.